This introduces a topic which is taught at this level, which is the rules for applying multiple operations in the same question. And we have these mnemonics or acronyms to help our students remember the order in which they apply the operation. So in Australia we commonly use one called BOMDAS, which stands for brackets. The O can stand for all sorts of things, um, other operations, order, sorry not operations, orders or of, strangely. Multiplying, dividing, adding and subtracting. The United States commonly use, I believe, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. And I've come across the phrase which I think American students are used to, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is rather nice as a way to remember the, uh, the, the um, acronym. And I've come across bid mass, which apparently is brackets, indices, divide, multiply, add, subtract. The problem with all of these is that it implies that there are six stages and that you apply them strictly in order one after the other. But you will realise, I'm sure, that we don't and that multiplying and dividing have to be done in order from left to right at the same level and then adding and subtracting are done from left to right at the same level. People misapplying this will sometimes assume that multiplying has to be done before dividing all the time and adding has to be done before subtracting. Of course, in this example, this acronym here, dividing is done before multiplying, apparently, if you follow that incorrect um, interpretation. I recently um, put a graphic on the Class and Professor Facebook page, you could go and have a look if you want to, and it simply had four operations. It had adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing, and no parentheses or brackets, and I simply invited people to uh, work out the answer. And there really were simple operations. All you had to do was apply the rules for order of operations correctly. And 74% of the respondents on Facebook got the answer wrong. Which alarmed me. Uh, considering most of the people on Facebook are likely to be adults or at least high school students. And there were people who just couldn't remember or just had learned it incorrectly it would appear or just didn't understand it. There are people saying, well, there's no brackets, so you don't know what to do. Um, there are people saying there are no brackets, so just apply everything in order, left to right. That was the most common thing people did, just ignore everything and not apply any rules. And there were people getting angry and saying, you're an idiot if you don't know this. And that included those who were getting the answer correct, as well as those who were getting it wrong. So absolutely fascinating. But a bit of an alert for teachers who teach this topic, including myself, that it's quite often badly learned and adults, you know, perhaps many years after they finish school, often don't remember it correctly and perhaps didn't even learn it correctly in the first place. So all of that is to say let's be careful with this and let's take it slowly if we can. And I know there's a very crowded curriculum so there's, you know, pressure to get through things quickly. But we really owe it to our students to teach this carefully and well. Okay, so there we go. Now, sometimes we can use brackets or parentheses as a way of helping our students. So let me just put up an example. Um, with an example like this with mixed operations, if you apply this in order left to right, you will get it wrong. So if you know the order of operations rules, you'll know to apply two times four and then add the three. A teacher can help students by inserting brackets or parentheses, but Note that that means you don't need the order of operations rules and so you can almost short circuit the students learning of those if you always apply bra brackets or parentheses. So um, I would say we need to apply students, uh, apply questions that do have brackets or parentheses as well as those that don't. In this example here, you can see that the parentheses make a difference. If we didn't have them, the answer would be different. So 11 take away 8 is 3, plus 1 is 4. But if we add the 8 and the 1 first, getting 9, 11 take away 9 is 2. So it does make a difference. So in all of these questions, um, using the worksheets, we would not be doing them in a time setting. At least that's our recommendation. But we would spend some time teaching our students how to apply it. And then these are practice exercises.